So today I've come to the outskirts of Portsmouth with the hope of photographing shorted owls, which is one of my favourite birds. Um, we've been here before, me and Jerry, who's joining me today. You alright Jerry, you looking forward to it? Of course. Uh, we've had hits and misses in the past and today we're, we're quite optimistic. It's the first time we've tried this year, but we're hoping to see them hunting in front of us. But in the meantime, it's just enjoying the rest of the wildlife around us and seeing what else we can see. If you're wondering why we're not really camouflaged up, it's because these particular owls are really close to the city of Portsmouth and the track that we're on is really quite a busy one, so they seem to be quite used to humans. Uh, they never really change their behaviour when people are walking their dogs and things like that, even right past where they're hunting, so we're quite, quite easy, it's quite easy for us to just sit here and wait and not worry about disturbing them at all, which is actually quite a nice change. Having said that, we have seen absolutely nothing so far. <laughs> we saw a few Brent geese though, didn't we? Brent geese and one kestrel. Yeah, and a kestrel. Yeah, I tell a lie, we saw a kestrel. So we're still waiting for the owls, but as we were waiting for them, uh, a few Brent geese flew quite close to us and flew in about... How many do you think there were? About 16 or so? And in my experience, when a few take off from a big, big group like that, it's usually only a couple of minutes before the rest take off as well. So we're just setting up now, waiting for the next wave to come through, because they'll come through in waves. Um, it's just a case of waiting a few minutes now and seeing if we've, if we've got it right or not. Chimping is not always bad. <laughs> so chimping, when you check the back of the camera, as a lot of people watching might know, is highly disputed amongst photographers. Some say you should never check the back of your camera because you'll miss the shot. Um, I'm fall on the side of the fence that says always check the back of your camera because the shots you're getting might be garbage. <laughs> so just then in the split second, they came in two small waves. The first wave I took a few shots, I quickly checked and they were very dark. Now I could raise that in post-production, I could do it on the computer, but it's often a lot better to do it in the field, obviously. So I quickly up torch scored my exposure compensation and the next lot of shots were a lot more usable. turn for the worse and we've decided to head back to the car. Jerry's actually going all the way home. Um, however, as we came around the corner, I found a spot that, even as this rain's starting to hit, is full of the birds flying along the water, so I tried to get some shots of them just before I head back. The rain's really coming in quite hard, but you've got to try and get the shot. I don't know if you can see actually, but there's quite, the birds are really going mad. Um, I don't know if that's because they know bad weather's about to hit, or because they just had their island swept away so they don't know where to land. Either way, there's a lot of photo opportunity, so I'm gonna try my best before I get absolutely soaked. As some of you may have already realised, no, we did not see any shorted owls in the end. I was really down about it, but I always aim to be truthful in these videos, and sometimes you just don't find what you set out to find. However, the day was not a waste by any means. As the winds picked up, I got really lucky and the rain began to ease. On the walk back to my car, I found a small island where the birds were landing in large numbers to try and take shelter from the wind. 
due to them prioritising this rest over being close to humans, I took my chance and got some really amazing slow-mo footage and at least a couple of photos I was really happy with. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and thank you all for watching.